Welcome to the uh, Open Embedded and Yocto Project BOF. Uh, I'm Armin Custer. I'm with Monta Vista Software, and I, I'm on the Yocto Project uh, TSC, and I do stable branch maintaining stuff. Hello, everyone. My name is Nicolas Duchesne. I work uh, for Linaro, and I'm also uh, the Yocto Project Community Manager. So this is the usual buff that we, I mean, I guess most of you might have actually been at one of these sessions in the past. We do that at every ELC, ELCE. Uh, usually we don't have too much to say. It's we are more here to hear from you. Uh, so the idea is that uh, we will just I mean, briefly say a few words and then we will, uh, I mean, give you the mic and you can ask questions. Uh, we have many people from the project uh, in the room. Uh, Richard Purdy is here. Uh, Kem Raj is here uh, from the TSC and many other people. So you can ask us anything, anything, any technical question, any question about what we are doing, uh, what we could change to make the project better. Uh, it's really, I mean, it's really your talk, not our presentation. Okay, so uh, this is just a brief uh, project update. We just released the uh, 3.0 uh, Zeus on October 23rd. Uh, we're anticipating our first dot release, we're hoping uh, in December sometime. Uh, the Warrior update is kind of delayed due to some issues, and Thud is about to release uh, its uh, fourth dot release. Oh, and it may, this one, uh, the Thud release may be the last one we do, because it's going to go into community uh, as Zeus is under support. Um, we started our 3 1 planning. Uh, the code name is, I don't know, <laughs> he's, wor he's working on code name for it. Um, but we, here's the milestones as we see it for the various, uh, for the 3.1 release. It starts out in December and we think it's going to release sometime in April as usual. And then we have the uh, Zeus updates and some other, if, there's a link at the bottom if you want to look at the uh, Planning doc, it's open to anybody. Uh, we have uh, meetings once a month, uh, so you're welcome to come uh, listen and contribute to that. Uh, the Octo Project uh, TSC uh, has uh, submitted uh, a proposal for LTS. Um, it hit the mailing list last week, this week? Last week. Like that, last week. Yeah, it's a good discussion. This is the link uh, for that uh, proposal and in that this is the email it itself and it has a link to the doc itself. Some of the highlights for the uh, LTS is it's going to be two years. Uh, it's going to follow a similar, similar process as stable. We're thinking it's just a single host support and no manual QA. Uh, so if you you can read the proposal, you can get on the mailing list and uh, get involved in the discussions. So just on that, I mean, this is the one topic that we hear at every time we make a buff, and people are asking, I mean, where is the LTS? Uh, so this is, I mean, a proposal which has been put by the TSC. It's open. It's, it's a proposal. So, I mean, basically, we are looking for feedback. Uh, how, we don't always know how people are actually using the project, so we definitely, I mean, care about uh, the, this feedback. So that's, that's the baseline for the discussion, and we can talk more today or later in the week if you want. Uh, OE has a new TSC. Um, they've uh, had elections, and three people were re-elected, and we have two new members, uh, Bruce Ashfield and Joshua Watt. Uh, they have their own wiki page for it if you want to see what's going on with uh, that TSC. Uh, mailing lists are moving to Groups.io. So this is more or less, unfortunately, the same sl slide as like maybe six months ago. Uh, but the change now is that we really think that this is going to happen. Uh, so we have been through uh, some issues. Uh, the idea is that we want to migrate. To, we are today uh, managing our own uh, server for the mailing list. We want to move away from that model. Uh, many of the uh, open source uh, project at LF actually have moved to groups.io and we are going to do the same. And we believe it's going to happen, I mean, if not next week, I mean, the, the week right after. So sooner or later, if you are on a mailing list, you will get some notification that something has changed. 
and an account will be made for you and everything will just work as before, hopefully. Uh, the main change that you have to know is that we change the domain names. So every list used to be something at yoctoproject.org. It will now be something at a list.yoctoproject.org. That's the only change that will be visible and uh, hopefully the rest will go through well. Uh, we've been doing this uh, live coding with the Octo project. Uh, uh, this is a, a, a Twitch account that uh, Joseph, if you see him up here, is Joseph? he's hosting it. Uh, I think it's once a week. Uh, no, once a month. Once a month. Okay. Uh, at, at the moment, every second Tuesday month. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have some links so you can follow and sign up and, and uh, watch what drink uh, Joseph is having that morning. So uh, about that, so that's a very good example of things that can happen uh, because you want that. Uh, so this thing is, I mean, Joseph wanted to help and he wanted to say, I mean, how can I help the project? And he came up with this idea about making this live session. So we are, I mean, we really like the initiative. We really thank you for doing that. And we want more Joseph <laughs> and more <laughs> ideas, basically. So anything you want to do to contribute to help the project, whether it's doing, uh, I mean, this kind of video stuff or, I mean, tutorials or anything, any idea you have that can benefit the project, you can come uh, talk to me or talk to, I mean, any, any of us, and we can see how we can actually work together and how we can help you. So, and, and what kind of help you need to make that happen. And uh, this year we're doing a Yocto Summit, which is the Thursday and Friday of this week. Um, it's going to be in the St. Clair uh, 3A and B of this here, yes. right? Yes. Uh, there's a link there, so I, I don't think we're taking any more registrations. Or yeah, we, we are. We are? Oh, we are. It's still possible. We so this is the first time we do this. Uh, again, it's been a, a very popular demand. Every time we go to a conference, people already wanted to have like a very specific Yocto and Open Embedded event where we can talk. It, it's not like a place for developers to hack. It's really a place for people, I mean, to just, I mean, out the users and the developers to come and meet. Uh, so we've sent some CFP. I think um, during the summer we received actually a lot of proposals and we've done some selections so that there will be talks, presentations, uh, there are like uh, workshops, hackathons, uh, there are many things which is going to happen. Again, it's really, I mean, the event for the uh, community as a whole and uh, we are very happy that we could do that for the first time this year. That's it. And now, so usually the first uh, question is the most more difficult and then the issue is that we cannot leave the room because there are many questions so who wants to be the first i have a simple one will there be beer on thursday evening just come and you will see <laughs> <laughs> david sorry how do you get the slides how do you get the slides how to post them they will be posted on the, I mean, ELC website, and as usual, with like any, like any other uh, presentations. First question or suggestion. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I'm from uh, the project Mendo.io, uh, and we have been using uh, the Octo project uh, for many years now. And it's also been our uh, primary integration platform for, uh, yeah, to integrate our solution into devices. Uh, the Octo project has been the main uh, domain for us. Uh, but So this is a question related to adoption. So it's not so many, maybe so fun technically, but it is a problem that, I mean, it's well known that the Octo project is hard to start with. Uh, and when we are working with our customers, we are seeing a lot of people uh, that maybe they want to use the Octo project, uh, but they struggle with, uh, yeah, if they're coming from this Debian, uh, Raspbian world. Uh, getting into Yocto is, a, is a, quite a heavy thing. Um, so I'm kind of requesting for feedback because we at Mender has started an uh, initiative to try to bridge, uh, we, we kind of see a gap. Uh, the Yocto project documentation, from my, pers from my perspective, who work with Yocto every day, is pretty good, uh, but if you are coming in as a new user, uh, the Octo project documentation is very heavy. It's very detailed. It goes goes into very detailed, like how everything is done in the background and so on. So we kind of felt that there's this gap missing uh, for getting started quickly. 
to maybe, and a lot of our customers or users that we see are maybe at the infancy of a product. So they're evaluating an idea, and they wanna build something that works, try it out, and maybe then come back later and learn all the details and everything. So we, so what we are launching basically is something we call Mendel Knowledge Hub, uh, which is part of our community platform. So we, we have started out writing, getting started tutorials on Yocto basically, and covering, uh, so far we've written like uh, getting started with, uh, with uh, using Python in Yocto. How does it work? How do you find the Python modules? And, and it's all from a perspective coming from like Debian. Uh, you're used to working with Python in Debian, uh, but it's a quite different do using Python in, in the Yocto project. Uh, so I basically, I don't really have a question, so I'm more re requesting for feedback, what you think about uh, such an issue, I mean, we are committed to probably, we're gonna, we have like six tutorials right now, so we are just releasing this uh, project. But over time, we are committed to, yeah, continuously add more resources as it goes along. Uh, but I also think that, yeah, we are looking for like-minded people that also see a benefit in uh, early stage adoption. Uh, and um, we would happily, like, collaborate, and uh, this is, of course, publicly available that we have so far. Uh, so, yeah, request for comments and feedback. So this is public material that people can look at today. And so maybe, I mean, so we have the uh, advocacy team. I don't know if you know, I mean, what it is, but there is an advocacy mailing list. So one, one I mean, one way to start would be to actually send an email there, join that list, and send an email and say, this is what we have, and this is what we have to offer. And, and that would be, I mean, I mean, we can talk here, or we can also continue on the, on the mailing list. I think I wanted to say the same thing, but essentially, you know, if we can bridge the gap between yaktoproject.org and what you're doing, and thereby kind of like provide a central location where others can also contribute, so maybe, I mean, you know, going to that KC probably they'll find out an yeah, amicable way of like collaborating with others. So, well, it's a good initiative, I think. I mean, I, I don't know what this is about, but uh, I mean, if it's material which, which can benefit the project, the first thing we could do would be to link. And I mean, we have the website, which is, I mean, uh, the visible face of the project. So we, we could link to that, and then we, there could be a request for improvements or making new materials or anything. Any other? Uh, from the perspective of someone who takes a lot of uh, uh, takes care of a lot of newcomer questions, um, the most prominent problem that I'm seeing is that way too many newcomers try to transfer a mindset that they know to the Yocto project, which is just not going to work. So in my experience, I always try to make the two or three core mindset things very, very clear. Because once those are burned into your brain, the, the rest is just a matter of asking the right people or Googling. But if you, if you go like, hey, okay, now I've got installed this Yocto Linux, but my apt get won't work, then your mindset is broken and no article will fix it. It's really, if, if you are working with newcomers, my experience says get, get the most core mindset straight, then the rest will follow. Thank you. Something in, on the topic or different maybe, question? Maybe, maybe. Uh, yeah. Hello. Um, even about the topic of the newcomers uh, and uh, what could be interesting um, to improve uh, slash uh, learn uh, Yocto, I ran an independent survey uh, asking to newcomers uh, to propose uh, what uh, kind of features would be nice to have into the Yocto project, and what are the uh, most important topics uh, actually uh, uh, used into the project. So if you want to have a look at it, uh, please uh, tell me. Thank you. We won't. <laughs> okay, do you have anything else? I mean, anybody has any comments on what Miasa was saying? Uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I agree with what you said about uh, a lot of people coming from this Debian world uh, have a different mindset. Uh, and we have tried, uh, we have done, we've done a lot of uh, articles on the Octo project. And one specifically we did was adjusting from binary distributions to the Yocto project, where we kind of went through this. In Yocto, you are like ground up. You're not going from the top and so on. So we try, we, we, we've tried that. Uh, but I also still feel that, um, I mean, a lot of the companies that we work with, maybe they, maybe they have the right mindset, but they don't want to learn everything at the beginning, right? So they have some kind of uh, product or idea that they're developing. Uh, and they don't want to become Yocto experts the first thing they do. They want to test their AI, machine learning application, whatever, uh, and deploy it in, like, in a pre-production release. Uh, and in that phase, so it's kind of like, uh, providing a quick start guide to, not maybe the correct way to say it, like to go quickly to production, uh, but kind of help without going too much into the details. Uh, they will probably, go, if they go down this path, they will probably learn everything that they need to know. Uh, but at least during this initial phase, uh, it's quite important. Okay, thanks. So as I said, I think this kind of initiative should start on the Yocto advocacy mailing list or by talking to I mean, one of us, like you've done. And uh, that's actually how we started with Joseph. It started by an email and uh, that's, so thanks. So, anybody else now? Nikolai, you helped me like a year ago to file a bug on Backtracker in regards of um, the uninative shim not being versioned. Um, and I can see that bug being moved, moved and moved and moved from milestone to milestone. I'm wondering what is so complicated about that. At least you testify that uh, we teach you how to create a bug. <laughs> uh, you know, Richard, you want to take this one? Yeah, so I think I'm the person who's actually had that bug and has been moving it forward over that time period. So, and it's, it's one of a number of different bugs. Um, the reality is we don't have an awful lot of people who are taking on bug fixing within the project and there's limits to what we can do. So yes, we've realized it. there is potential an issue there, but fixing it is not quite as simple as it first sounds. There were reasons why we didn't put a version in there directly. It's done through the URL you access it through, not necessarily in the file name. I appreciate that does cause some problems um, you know, the bug's valid, it's definitely an issue, but it just hasn't, we haven't got the, we haven't had the resources and the people working on bugs to be able to fix everything, so my apologies for not getting to it, but yeah, we can only do what we can do. And the message here is that you should still open bugs. I mean, it, it's not because, I mean, sometimes, I mean, I mean, we keep pushbacking fixing bugs, but we still want them and we still need to hear, I mean, the feedback. No question. Nobody wants to ask any questions about maybe the LTS. I mean, that was a good topic last time. I mean, now we have some proposal. What's the, are you asking me or are you, would you want me to ask you? Okay. So the, yes, yeah, so, okay, so the, the real challenge with the LTS is that, I mean, basically down to, I mean, again, I mean, the resources. So uh, we, we have to, we, we, we think we know uh, what we want to do. I mean, I mean, solving the LTS problem is kind of, we know what to do. Uh, the problem is we are asking who, I mean, can help or how the work is going to happen. There is actually issue with uh, actual people helping the project and doing the work. And then there is also uh, problems with how we are going to test. I mean, the test matrix is going to be uh, demultiplied by it, I mean, and, and, and much longer. So that's, that's the, I mean, obviously the, one of the biggest issues that we have. You want to add anything, Rachel? So again, I mean, this is, I mean, this is unfortunate. I mean, but this is probably like very often in, I mean, in the project, but we are always, I mean, very limited by, I mean, the resources that we have, so. Anything you can do to help us giving feedback, 
helping with resources or in any way, I mean, is always something which can definitely help the project. What we see with the project, it's used a lot. I mean, we know that, and I mean, it's basically there are lots of people in the room, uh, but the number of developers that actually contribute to the project is not actually uh, proportional to the number of the users of the, of the project. That's one of the big issues and big challenge that we have in the project. So I think uh, one of the ways that, that folks out there could help is if your company is really relying on Yocto Project and you have developers that actually understand some of the bugs that happen to be on Bugzilla, pick them up and work on them and, you know, and help us fix them, right? So there is a very large community using Yocto Project and there is ample opportunity for people to contribute and get involved. And if you're a newcomer and you're afraid of being embarrassed or whatever, you know, then just realize we're, we're probably one of the most welcoming and open communities there is in open source. It's, I'm pretty proud of that fact. Um, and so you may get a terse email from Kemraj to one of your, your patches, right? <laughs> the fact, it, it, it's, but it's, right, so, Take, understand that, the, that it is short because time, cause Kim's time to respond is short. The fact that he actually responded is very significant. You caught his attention, okay? So for, and you know, and there's other things like that. So, you know, put your ego, put your, um, you know, your emotions on the shelf and just, you know, try to realize that, that any response you get is not personal or anything like that. But I just think, you know, there's so many opportunities for people to get involved and help. You know, I personally actually joined this project before Yocto Project existed, we opened Embedded, and I was, I happened to be working at a company that was looking at using it. We ended up not using it, but I became a, a volunteer developer and I've never looked back, right? So there's just tons and tons of opportunity out there and I just, welcome anybody who wants to to just come in join help us you know help us make the project better don't just be a consumer don't just treat it like a product that's on the shelf right this is yours to be involved in and grow and just to put some i mean raw numbers uh, if you make two patches a week you be you enter the top 10 uh, uh, and number of developers of the project. I mean, so if you do this kind of thing, so it doesn't take a lot to actually help the project. If you look at every release that we make, uh, we basically, I think we talked about that today. I mean, we, we commit something like 15 to, I mean, between 15 and 20 uh, commit every day of the release, but we have 10 people who actually really contribute, I mean, most of the time. So, I mean, it's actually not that, I mean, we, we don't need like huge amount of people. I mean, every, every one, one engineer can actually make a difference at the project level. So, I mean, everybody can help and, and, and all these people in this room, I mean, collectively, I mean, can actually make a big difference for the project. So, okay, I'm asked to mention uh, how to reach out uh, to the developers. So, I mean, obviously we rely a lot on the mailing list, uh, but we are also using IRC a lot, and uh, people like uh, Joseph help people, newcomers. I mean, like, this is, he's doing that almost like every day. And uh, most of the key, I mean, developers are also there on IRC and also answer questions. So you can actually reach out. To, I mean, everyone is actually very easy to reach out to in this project. That's actually quite true. So uh, I have been working with Yocto for like two or three years and first of all I want to say thank you to you guys because I think it is very good. Um, so my question is, um, I was submitting like one or two patches and um, I always ask myself, am I breaking some something else, you know, I'm just working on my BSP or um, maybe I even run it um, on QAMU ones, but um, are there more things you can do to actually make sure that your patch is not breaking something else, like there are auto builds or something? So maybe Richard will add something. Uh, what we can say, uh, every, I mean, every patch which is on the mailing list, which is good enough to be maybe merged, is actually going through the auto builders. So there is a huge 
uh, IT infrastructure behind the project, and everything is, I mean, there is the auto builder that where we actually test all the combination that you did not test. So, I mean, the, Richard, maybe you can explain when you, when you decide to make, take a patch into the AB? Yeah, well, pretty much any patch that we are thinking about taking goes into the auto builder and gets tested. All of those test configurations are actually public, and there are test cases that you can actually run by hand. So, for example, if you are changing something like recipe tool or dev tool, there's specific test suites that can be used with those, and it's a command line along the lines of oe-self-test-r um, recipe tool or something like that, which is like the module name of the thing that we're testing. And I think my ask, my, my suggestion is that if you're making changes in any of these areas, help us add new tests, because um, even if there's no tests there currently, if you add your tests in, that means that whatever it is that you just fixed will hopefully not regress again, because if we've got tests there, we'll be able to check that in future. So test, adding new test cases is something that we're starting to sort of ask for with new contributions, particularly in areas of the project which we don't necessarily know an awful lot about. So. Um, because but this is one of the challenges. The project can be configured in so many different ways with so many different options. How do you test it? And the way we do that is through things like OE self-test and those modules. So, uh, did you know about the ATO builders? I mean, did you know that we had one? Okay. So maybe one thing we could do, I mean, we have a how to submit a patch, I think, on one of the wikis. So we could actually explain I mean, not only how to submit a patch, but what happens once you submit a patch. Like maybe, I mean, this kind of thing. I mean, this is actually an interesting feedback. I think you should, I mean, I mean, not everybody knows that stuff. So maybe we should have another section in that wiki that says, once you submitted a patch, and if, I mean, of course, if, the, if there is a review comments, or I mean, if the, the patch is not okay, I mean, that's, but then if the patch is okay, I mean, there is a whole life cycle for this patch, which we probably could document. At least you should have a link to the auto builders and the process that we follow. It's it's. I was just going to say, in the auto builder process, for those who don't know about it, it takes roughly about six hours to crunch through it, but we do the patches in batches because we can't afford the CPU cycles to basically test things individually. So it is a manual process to collect things up and trigger it, and it's done in batches of roughly around 30 to 60 patches or so. And it's built and tested. Yes, and then so the, the, it's build tests, it's also runtime tests, so we do test a lot of the things under Chemu, including things like p-test packages for um, components within those, those images, which is why we're running the upstream tests related to a given piece of software. Uh, the stable branches go through the same process when we backport patches. We use the same infrastructure and QA tests and stuff. Yeah. Um, so sometimes you don't actually see any response on the mailing list because your patch was basically, you know, nobody had any major comments and they brought it into a master next branch. So what you should be looking for is in the repository that you're committing to or you're sending a patch for. Look for it to be landing in the master next and you will usually hear feedback if it broke something and then, you know, then otherwise it often tends to be merged. The reality is we don't have enough manpower to be reviewing every single patch and, and you know, really responding. The other thing is if you're talking about uh, a given recipe or a given package and not part of the core tooling, uh, if you just simply run on, you know, QMU x86, QMU ARM, you know, there's five or six QMUs that are, that are or more than that, but anyway, you can run on all of them if you, if you like. But if you want to just do some basic sanity checking that you haven't broken anything, at least run on, on the two main uh, QMUs. The other thing is uh, Kim would really love it if you would also build it with muscle because this is one of the things that, we, that is most likely to break. So you, of any patch you're going to do to a given recipe or whatever it is, it is highly likely that muscle will have issues with it. And so just you know, do us all a favor and actually look at that. Um, uh, there's many, many ways of doing the, you know, your own automation and your own testing and so on. Uh, so in the Yachter Project Summit, I'm actually going to be talking about result tool and I'm going to talk about p-test and the uh, OE self-test stuff. So I'll be giving at least a light view of what all those mean, how you run it, you know, what it, what it takes. And many of these tests are quite easy to run just from the command line or something like that. So it, it's, there's quite a bit you can do on your own. Yeah, I was just gonna say, oh, I was just gonna say that 
from my personal experience, uh, the auto builder code is there as well. It's a repo. You can clone it. You can create your own CI on that, and it all the the matrix of different combinations that are tested, they're there. So you technically, if you have time, you can just uh, load your own uh, auto builder and put it to run at night. And you know you're not breaking anyone else's things uh, with your patch, right? You just use your branch instead. And yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. You, you can do it, you can, the auto builder publishes uh, the downloads in estate as well, so if you can configure it with that, it's not even gonna take that long. Even though it's not the perfect test for a newcomer. Well, but on the, yeah. Okay. Thank you again. Uh, you can attend my talk on Friday and learn how to strengthen <coughs> your uh, uh, Yocto uh, deployments. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so um, the um, Open Embedded website lists a lot of uh, layers available, and my question is, does this auto testing involve the those layers that might be out of you know like not in the core uh, because I'm looking for some features you look for layers and some of layers are actually not maintained or not not that not in sync have no uh, like um, a branch which matches the the Yocto release so how, how is it handled so I guess you are talking about the uh, layer index, which is a really good tool uh, that uh, exists on layers.openembedded.org. Uh, that, I mean, everybody is free to submit. So if you, if you have your own layer, you can submit that. There is a light process where we review, I mean, that the content of the layer is, uh, I mean, it's actually a layer. I mean, it's not something that is going to break everything. And then we just publish. So, I mean, we don't do any specific test on what is published on the, on the layers. If the maintainer of the layer does not provide the release branch for that you need, I mean, that's your, I mean, you can ask the maintainer, but we don't do anything. In terms of the testing, uh, what we'd mentioned with the auto builder is for uh, what is on the, uh, on the, on the core side. So it's, it's basically, I mean, pocky to some extent. Uh, there are also, uh, I mean, CI that happens uh, with more layers inside uh, your uh, open embedded. And maybe, Kim, you want to talk about what you are doing? Yeah, so I think um, right now, I think we are working on primarily, you know, a bunch of servers that we have on open embedded. So we don't do any of the runtime tests given, you know, the number of layers there are and number of large packages. The turnaround time is too big, like even for the builds, it's around like 12 hours for one build. So, um, but I'm kind of like, we are working with the um, Yocto project where we have now started to, some projects to kind of integrate more layers. It's essentially the, some of this op meta open embedded layers. So, uh, we are like regularly building them there as well. So I think eventually I do have plans to add more like p-test kind of things in there, depending upon how much resources we have there, so um, I'm kind of looking at how much S state it is using from you know the master builds, which is pretty good right now, pretty encouraging. So meta open embedded builds don't take that longer on AB. Um, so you know we might have more tests like runtime tests as well in future. I don't know, depends like on participation, but right now that's what we do. And I think there are individual layers that you have on GitHub or other places, and you have to go and talk to those maintainers and. Maybe just many layers, they keep their master working on multiple releases. So you might not see a third release, but the master of that project is still built with that. Right? So I know that Meta Browser is that way. Right? So you might want to check with the maintainers. They have different policies. You may not have like exact branch, you know, um, that's what. Back to the original question, I mean, what we described earlier with the process of the patch and the AB and so on is, is for things that go into the core, I mean, the, the, the core layer. Okay. That's fine, I can do that.
So is that the only woman leaving the room right there? Oh, Beth, we got Beth. Two, well, besides us, oh, and you. So um, first of all, I wanted to say that I've never seen Kem write more than a sentence, so don't take it personally at all, ever. And in fact, he asked Richard today if Richard could possibly do the weekly status reports in 240 characters or less. Oh, 140. Sorry, 140, yeah. So, you guys have no sense of humor at all. I can't believe it. Um, I wanted to say a couple of things. I know today, I don't know if you guys brought this up, I was a little bit late. We were talking about the planning meetings for Yocto Project for the next Rev. Did you talk about that at all? So, I don't really know that much about them. I know they take place. Are they weekly? Weekly? Monthly. Doesn't matter. You can figure out how often. Tim's going to tell because he can't stand it when I give the wrong information. But my point is that there's this really unique opportunity for you guys to show up and input on what you want out of the project and what you think is important and what directions it should go in and what you really need. And uh, I think a lot of people don't take advantage of that. And I think it's super, super important for people who don't have a sense of humor to show up at the planning meetings and, uh, and input some stuff. So I know there are things that are important to you. And it's possible that they're just not getting into the project because no one knows. And then the other thing, which is uh, much more simple, is we have a really cool thing on the Yocto Project website where you can advertise jobs. So if any of you have a position in your company that you'd like to have advertised to other Yocto Project open embedded people, it's uh, another place you can do so. And so you just send it in to, I think there's a link on the website somewhere, or to the webmaster. You can send it to anywhere. We'd be happy to post it and uh, happy to post it. Yeah. Thanks, Richard. OK, thank you. So yeah, so that was a good idea to talk about the meetings. The project has a couple of meetings. Uh, there is an engineering Weekly, weekly, and uh, which I mean is, I mean anyone can join and attend and just try to to contribute to the project. One thing which is to link to what we how we started, uh, we we sometimes feel that we are missing feedback from the users. I mean we have very good feedback from the developers. I mean that we know all of them, but we are missing feedback from the users. So what Tracy was saying is that if you want to, I mean. One way to contribute to the project is to explain how you use the project and what you expect from the project, because sometimes we don't even know what I mean, you expect. And uh, we've seen, uh, sometimes we are surprised by what people are actually doing with the project, but we often learn that after the fact and not, not, not early enough. No. Uh, no. Yeah, phone calls? Yep. Oh, sorry. So there's essentially two meetings that happen every week. Um, one of them is once a month is the monthly technical call, but the rest of the time the same uh, Zoom number is used for the same time slot, and that's the engineering sync call. And that has in the past been all kinds of different things, talking about infrastructure and things like that, but it has recently become a, a catch-all for where we just talk about whatever happens to be going on. The other meeting that happens every week is the bug triage meeting, which is on Thursdays. So the technical calls on Tuesdays, the bug triage is on Thursdays. I will not try to do the EU time zone translation, but because uh, I'm from California or from the West Coast, sorry. Um, so the bug triage call is where we look at the new bugs that have come in during that week that have been added to Bugzilla, and we triage them, figure out what priority and everything to add them to attempt to figure out who is going to work on them, if they are high priority and things like that. And then we also look at the old bugs and things like that and try to make sure we're taking care of them and, and you know, keeping things healthy. Uh, we can absolutely use a lot more help in Bugzilla and in that space. So uh, we would recommend anybody that wants to, to join either one of those calls and uh, listen in, get a feel for what the meetings are about, and bring up issues that you might have. Any other questions? We are already running out of time. I, mean, I thought we had more than that, but but no, nobody has kicked us out anyway. So if, if there are more questions or any last one, maybe. Otherwise, maybe we are done. Nobody? 
Yeah, so we have, yeah, that's right. So we have the booth, uh, which is at the showcase, and I mean, so we are on there all day. Uh, so if you want to ask more questions or give us any feedback on the project, uh, there will always be someone from the project at the booth. And as uh, we mentioned, we have the Yocto Project Summit on Thursday. If you want to learn about that, you can also come and talk to us at the booth. Thanks again uh, for the both today, and uh, have a good uh, rest of the conference.